Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine, Part 18, Machining the Pulley. I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again, this is a Bassett Logue Tangy Engine. And it has one or two innovative designs. Look at the way the valve spindle has been machined. This fits in a corresponding slot in the slide valve and that's it, no adjustment, it just works. This is a steam chest, I've just given it another coat of paint because when I first painted it, I missed a bit. And this is the pulley, which is what this video is really about. This pulley is a mess. The only thing that's accurate on this, I think, is possibly the hole in the middle. I'll take it from there. The first thing to do is to make a mandrel in the three-jaw chuck. I'm not going to use any collets because I'm not happy with the ER40 collets that I have, and it's easier to do it this way. I've put a piece of steel in the chuck, and this is oversized, it does not fit in the pulley, so I'm going to turn it down, and it's most important once I start this job, not to remove it from the chuck. This three-jaw chuck is quite accurate, but if I remove the piece of metal from the chuck and refit it, then it will not spin true. What I'm about to do is reduce the external diameter of this piece of steel bar to exactly the same diameter as the hole in the pulley. If I turn the diameter of this piece of steel to exactly the same size as the hole in the pulley, this will be what is called an interference fit. And this interference fit is no good. In fact, depending on the interference fit, it could be problematic. For instance, if you have a bearing fit or a piston fit, there needs to be some clearance to allow the oil to get in there. Because if the oil can't get between the moving parts, wear will be very rapid and damage will probably occur. But in this case, I do not want any room for anything in between the metal bar and the hole in the pulley. Normally when I do jobs like this, I would turn the shaft to be a good fit in the hole and then fasten it all together using Loctite 603. But just for a change, because this is after all a tutorial, I'm doing it a different way. And of course this means that if you run out of Loctite 603 on a Saturday evening and you can't get any until Monday, it's not the end of the world, you can do it this way. I don't need to use a micrometer for this job, I just keep putting the original pulley up against the work I can tell how much more I need to take off. This once again is down to experience. It's not a talent, it's not a gift from God, it's just a case of practice. Like a lot of things in life, the more you practice doing something, by repetition, the better you get at it. It's all a matter of degrees, because sometimes if you do too much repetition, then it will drive you insane. And talking about insanity, uh, just a minute, nurse, nurse, is it time for my medication yet? No, I'm okay for the moment. So this is the fit that I need. It's a tight fit. I couldn't push this on by hand. So how am I going to do it? Well, first of all, I'm going to clean it up with a piece of wet or dry sandpaper to make it very smooth. And then I'm going to tap it with a soft mallet. With the pulley lightly pushed onto the mandrel, it's time to spin up the lathe and see what it's like. And just look at the state of this. The hole in the middle is in the middle, but the rest of it isn't. I'll tap it on a bit further using my soft mallet, which is not a good idea, but it will do for now. And just as I thought, that's made no difference. The hole is still in the middle, it's running concentrically on the mandrel, but the rest of it is anything but true. So, what's gone on here? There are so many errors on this engine, I'm surprised. This cannot be a commercial item. It must have been built from a kit, and badly built from a kit. Now I need to push this pulley onto the mandrel and I'm using the tailstock chuck. It's worth remembering that you can apply an awful lot of pressure using the tailstock. And as you can see in this clip, with very little effort, the chuck pushes the pulley firmly onto the mandrel all the way. My early attempts at machining interference fits were disastrous, and I even cracked a few locomotive wheels while pressing them onto the axles, because the interference fit was far too tight. But after a while, the penny drops and you learn how to do it. The first part of the job is to true up the external diameter and I'm having to take quite a lot of metal off here because it's so far out of round. I keep stopping the lathe just to make sure of the progress and see how much more I need to take off. This is the final cut I think and it should be okay. Did you notice how I very quickly used the back of the lathe tool to remove the sharp edges from the other side of the pulley? The last thing you want on a pulley that's going to rotate is something with a sharp edge. And to complete the sharp edge removal, I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper. I don't want to round the edges, I just want to remove the sharpness on the edge, because a 90 degree cut is razor sharp. 
and I've been looking forward to this next bit because the original V groove was a joke. I'm not using a special V tool, I've just turned this one round in the tool post to cut at the right angle. And very gently I machine a perfectly accurate V groove in the outer diameter of the pulley. You have to watch this because brass grabs the tool, you can see how it jumps a little bit. And here's another top tip using the tailstock. All I do now is slacken off the mandrel and the chuck and press it through with the shank of a twist drill used the wrong way around in the tailstock chuck. Then I pull the mandrel out of the chuck and tighten it up and once again using the tailstock chuck I press the pulley onto the mandrel. I'm not going to machine this side because I like the shape of it. I'm just using a piece of emery cloth to clean up the brass and make it shine. This pulley may have started out life as a casting because it's quite rough at this side and it took quite a while to clean it up first of all with this type of emery cloth and then followed by wet or dry sandpaper. It's still not perfect but it's near enough for rock and roll and a lot better than it was before. And finally once again I slacken the mandrel in the chuck then I push out the mandrel from the pulley with the shank of a twist drill used the wrong way round in the tailstock chuck. So now the pulley doesn't look perfect but it's a lot better than it was. Time to fit something to clamp the pulley to the crankshaft. I'm not going to use a large ugly bolt, I'm using an allen head grub screw as I'm showing here. And now I can loosely reassemble the engine and it's going together beautifully. Theoretically this engine should run very well, but I've yet to find out whether it does. And that's about it, the engine's starting to look quite good. I still think I'm going to give the flywheel another coat of red paint. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.